All right, this is section 2.6, mathematical models building functions. Um, it's really important, take your time when you go through this um, and write each of the examples down. I know it's not inherent to write examples down, be, but these are um, questions that you guys are going to find on your standardized tests a lot. So it's important to know how to take it from the words to the equations and to manipulate them. So our first goal is to build and analyze functions. So finding the distance from the origin to a point on a graph. So we're going to let um, P equal XY be a point on the graph of Y equals X squared minus 1. We're going to express the distance from P to the origin as a function of X. We're going to find distance if X equals 0, if X equals 1, if x equals root 2 over 2. And then we're going to use a graphing utility to graph the function um, d of x when x is greater than or equal to 0, rounding to two decimal places. Find the value of x, which has a local min. And if you look, here's a nice little picture. This distance here is the distance from the origin, and we're going to generic, make it a, gen a generic version of that one so we can use it for any point. So let's start with the distance formula. We're looking at from 0, 0 to any point on um, our graph. So x minus 0 squared, y minus 0 squared is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So that's the distance from 0 to a point. Now, we know that y equals x squared minus 1. So we're going to replace the y with x squared minus 1 and simplify. So we're going to multiply out x squared minus 1 times x squared minus 1. And then combine the x squared. Um, so we get x to the fourth minus x squared plus 1. So when we plug 0 in, here, we get square root of 1, which is 1. When we plug in 1 here, we get 1 minus 1 plus 1, which is also 1. When we plug in root 2 over 2, plug them in here, um, we get root 3 over 2. So our function to find the distance is square root of x to the fourth minus x squared plus 1. We're going to use a graphing utility to find the local minimum. So we just we put this equation in our graph. We use the minimum operation underneath calculate calc and to find that the minimum is at x equals 0 0.707 and y equals 0 0.866. All right, so area of a rectangle. A rectangle has one corner on the graph of y equals 25 minus x squared, another at the origin. So one here and one here. A third on the positive y-axis and a fourth at the positive x-axis. Express the area of the rectangle as a function of x. What's the domain? Graph it. And for what value of x is the largest, the area largest? If you don't have a picture, make sure you draw one. I find that it helps organize my thoughts and my processes when I have a picture. So the first thing we want to do is write the area of a this square. This is a rectangle, sorry. The area of the rectangle, which is the x times the y. So we know that y is equal to 25 minus x squared. So we FOIL that out and we get 25x minus x to the third. So we want um, the domain of a is between 0 and 5, because once you hit 5, you are no longer in the re rectangle range. So 
So here's the graph of our area function. And then we find the max is at 2.886752 that'll make the area the largest so right about here at 2.88 all right making a play pen a manufacturer of children's play pen makes a square model that can be opened at one corner and attached at right angles to a wall or perhaps the side of a house if each side is three feet in length three feet Three feet, three feet, three feet. The open configuration doubles the available area in which a child can play from 9 square feet to 18 square feet. See figure 65. Now suppose we place hinges on the outer corners to allow for configuration as the one shown in figure 66. It's a little hinges right there. So now we can make a nice little pentagon. A says build a model that expresses the area of the configuration shown in figure 66 as a function of the distance x between the two parallel sides. So we want area so we have the area of this rectangle this rectangle which is all right so this is where they're using Pythagorean theorem h squared they're taking this nice little right triangle h squared plus half of x squared is equal to 3 squared in order to um, have a relationship between h and x When you simplify that out and solve for h, you get h squared equals 3 squared minus x over 2 squared, which is 9 minus x squared over 4, or if you have a common denominator, 36 over x squared divided by 4. And then you take the square root of both sides, square root of 4, uh, square root of 1 over 4 is 1 half. And then the square root stays 36 minus x squared. Now notice that we don't include the negative value when we take the square root because we can't have a negative height. So normally when we're dealing with squaring both sides, we go plus minus. So our area is the area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle. So the area of the rectangle is 3 times x, and the area of the triangle is 1 half x, 1 half base, times the height, which we found the height was 1 half root 36 minus x squared. The domain of A... Is anything that'll keep this under the root positive so we want to set 36 minus X anything greater than that value and when we do that we get X squared less than 36 so we need any of the numbers between negative 6 because negative 6 squared is 36 and positive 6 but can we have negative 6 no, we only can have positive values. So we combine this and the fact that we have to have positive values to put a domain together of 0 less than 6, x less than 6. So now we want to find if a x is equal to 5. So we plug in 5. And simplify, and we get 19.15 square feet. Now we're going to graph it and find out which value of x makes the area the largest. So we do so on our graphing calculator, and we find that the maximum happens at 5.6, 19.82. 
and then the maximum area when we plug that in is 19.8 and that's 